Hey, 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 what's going on, guys and gals? In this particular video, we're going to talk about ducking, the quack of the quackers, okay? One of our members, CK, up in the community up there on Facebook, X32 Rack Users, said, you know what, man, this is what I'd like to do. I want to be able to go live, and I want to be able to have some crowd mics set up, and I want those to stay off until they get finished with the song and the lead singer, you know, comes up and he wants to interact with the crowd. He wants those mics to automatically come on. Now we could assign those two mics to a mute group, but we want this to be 100% automatic. Now, the other suggestion they came up with that, you know, uh, when you're in rehearsal, this would be a great thing to have as well. Uh, if you're used to using in-ear monitors, you know, uh, there, there are so many variables, guys. you got to really think of all of it, okay? Some groups will sit in there, and whether you're recording or rehearsal, and they'll just stay at it until they get what they want to get, you know, until they are confident with the tightness of what they're working on. Now, some people will go into that same studio or rehearsal, and they will sit there and just say, you know what? After the first song, I'm coming out of here, you know, out of these uh, inner monitors. So that's what we're talking about here. It's called ear fatigue. Okay, you, if, if you've done this long enough, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So if you look at the meters right here, you'll see that uh, channel 15 and 16, those are two mics that I have set up in my control room right now. These are condensers. And I've got them ducked all the way down. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to do this and what that means. Now, the other ones, these are gated right here, and uh, these are the toms, uh, eight and nine are two of the, uh, I think it's tom one and tom two, it's not the floor tom. And as you go through, you'll see these pop up every once in a while because it, it's, you know, there it goes right there, you know, they're hitting, uh, the, the tom and it's releasing that gate and it's opening up and it's coming through okay so let's go ahead and listen to that and uh you'll see exactly what i'm talking about Okay, so as you can see, and I'm going to go back up to the meters now just for a second. Now, uh, my input signal, I have the two condensers. And, and by the way, these are uh, Behringer C2s. I think I bought them on sale from Sweetwater. They were like $39. Okay, these are little small diaphragm pencil condensers, and I love them. I use them all the time. Okay, depending on what the need is, you know, uh, normally you get what you pay for. And I guarantee you, if you got a chance to look, you know, just look them up, uh, Behringer C, uh, C2s. And I think they've got them right now for $49. These things come with a hard case. They come with their own mount. Okay, they come with the um, uh, pop filters or, or windscreens, the dead kittens, you know, whatever you want to call them. So what I'm going to do right now, uh, even though you can see this signal coming in through 15 and 16, this is also assigned to the in-ears, okay? So when the lead singer wants to interact with the crowd, he will be able to hear these mics once they're unducked, okay? So how do we simulate that? Well, I've got uh, all my channels here coming in uh, assigned to Mute Group 1, and when I turn that off, watch those red lines disappear instantly. So now, okay... Uh, you know, the rest of the band has stopped playing. You wouldn't see these other signals coming in here. But he would be able to hear anything coming through uh, the crowd left and crowd light, uh, right mic. Okay? So let's go ahead and look at what we've done. Well, the first thing we've done is we've come over here to our buses. And on bus number 16, I've created a crowd ducking. Okay? Now look. If you've used all your buses, uh, like CK has, then, uh, you know, instead of bus 12, you can come up here, you can use one of your FX, okay, kind of 
stay along with me here. It, it's not too complicated, but it does get a little bit tricky. Now, as you can see in my in-ear monitor right here, okay, this is Dana, IEM, coming right out of here of bus number nine. When I speak, you're not hearing this through the microphone that this video is being done on. You're seeing that signal come through those house mics, okay? So, uh, at this point, I'm going to go back and I'm going to come up here to the crowd mic and we're going to go to the gate and instead of going with the gate guys we're going to go with the docker okay now over here your filters your solo none of this matters okay this is for a totally different thing but these are the source that you can trigger the crowd mics with and this is exactly what a uh, ducking a signal is uh, very commonly uh, with a, a kick mic and, and a bass you might have the bass channel to lower itself automatically by two or three dbs every time the kick comes in so when that kick comes in Okay, because you've made that source in, in this particular case over here at base, you see it's channel three right over here. Okay, so the source would be channel three. Let me come up here, right here. Okay, so what this means is if I set this duck up on this channel, okay, then you would sit here and go up, and every time that kick would hit and that signal would come through the base channel would already automatically duck down however many dBs that you want it to do, okay? Now, I've went extreme here on the uh, 60 dBs, and I'm gonna show you how this works, okay? I'm gonna unmute this and you'll see this start ducking instantly. Okay, now, here's your range. This is what sets how many dBs you wanna duck it by. Okay, so I want to duck it all the way, and that way I don't have to worry about it coming through or bleeding through. And then on your threshold over here, you can see I've got it set to 24.5, and this threshold is going to depend over here on the crowd ducking to how much you have signal going into that bus. Okay. Now, this is the key thing. There are so many ways you can do it from this point now, it's incredible. If I was going to do this, okay, and this is just strictly me, and I'm out there playing a live gig, and these guys did not want to hear any of the crowd mics in their in-ear monitors. None whatsoever. First off, I would come, if, if, if Dana was the lead singer, okay, I would be the only one that had the crowd mic put in, okay? I would be the only one. None of the other band members would have that in there, but I'm not, okay? So over here, if, if the lead, let's say the lead singer is also the guitar player, then you could take his vocal mic, and I don't have anything listed out here, but just kind of follow me now, okay? If, 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 Channel 1 was his vocal mic, then I could add his vocal mic into that. Okay, and let's say that he played the guitar. And then I would add his guitar in there as well, and that's all I would put in there. Okay, because this, if he stops playing the guitar and he stops singing, then more than likely the song is getting ready to come to an end, and this guy, okay, is going to be able to sit there and listen if somebody's out in the crowd, if he want to, you know, wants to interact with them. If you're out in an arena, this is going to be very tricky. If you're inside of a club, it's going to be pretty easy. Okay, it's going to be pretty easy to set. Now, over here on the crowd, as you can see, that I've got the attack very, very fast. Okay, because I want this thing to duck instantly when somebody starts playing. The hold you're going to have to mess with because if not, you're, let's start to, you'll start getting this choppy effect and you don't want that. The release, same way. I can't tell you how to set this because I'm not in your situation. Okay? 
But again, as you can see, nothing's coming through the house mics now, the mics that I have set up, my little C2s, unless I mute this. Okay, if I mute all this incoming audio, then instantly it goes away. And as you can see, I've got the signal coming up in here. And then I've got the signal coming through channel 15 and 16. And over here on the IEM, uh, let's go to the bus here. As you can see, I've got plenty of signal now coming in through my in-ear monitors. Okay, look at that range down there at the bottom. That's right at about 50, a negative 50 dBs. Okay, and that's noise floor is what that is. And the reason that noise floor is there, guys, is because of the gain, okay? On a, on a condenser mic, especially the small uh, uh, diaphragm condensers, you should never have to jack that gain up that high. The lower that gain, then the lower that noise floor, okay? As you can see, I do not have these going through the left main and rights up here, okay? We want these strictly to go to the in ear monitor for the people that want to listen to it on stage. Now, if I bring the meters up again, I'm going to be silent and let's look at meter 15 and 16. You see, it totally goes away. Over here, the ins and outs, the same way, it totally goes away. But over here on the bus, on my in ear, uh, right here, you see, you have that little bit coming in and that little bit going out. And that's because uh, over here, I've got it raised. Now, I can, I can adjust this. You have, that's why you have to play with this. You have to adjust your overall in-ear monitor to, depending on what style, what type, what make and model you have. And you can totally take every bit of that background noise out or that noise floor. Okay. Now, you see the in. Let's go back to uh, configure, back to those mics, and watch what happens. Now, if I drop this phantom power down, you can see I'm not getting very much signal coming out now. And that's going to affect me over here on this bus. You see, the signal goes away on the bus now. There's nothing coming in, but that's because I've reduced the gain input. Okay, so if I raise this up, I'm getting a little bit, but I'm still not getting any of that background noise, that noise floor. So basically, you know, what I'm showing you is how you do this. And you're going to have to play with it and get it to where you can get that input signal. Okay. Without bringing in too much noise floor or static, whatever you want to call it, to where you can get a healthy output level. Now, keep in mind again, watch this meter if I turn around and face these mics. Now, I can't see it, but it should go up quite a bit, okay? Now, think about being in a crowd. It's a lot louder. People are hollering, they're screaming, they're woo-hooing. You know, you'll be able to hear this a lot better, and then that way you can set your proper input gains to that. Now, if you're in the studio, you're in a controlled environment, or you're in rehearsal, you're in a controlled environment, you'll have no problem doing this whatsoever, all right? Take care, God bless, and we are out of here.